We have Keen McMillan, Combat Academy, the tall of the two men in the blue corner. Jake Jones, fourth dimension in the red. Three two minute rounds of K1 action. So, Keen in the blue corner, the slightly taller of the two, just. Jake in the red with the blue gloves. We touch gloves, push kick from Jake. Keen looks for the left knee, looks for the push kick again as Jake comes forward with the fists. Left knee again from Keen as Jake looks to close the gap, looks to come in with that left and then right over the top Keen as he starts to unload now forcing Jake to defend here as the knee comes in on the end of those combinations right and left knees side kick from Keen and then steps in with that left hand behind the side kick Both men circling now around the ring, doubles up that left Keen and looks for the left knee on the end of that combination, ducks under the left hook from Jake. Jab cross to the midsection this time from Keen. Jake on his toes but the right round kick and then the left leg comes up as well, nice combination from Keen. Ban with the kick and the right over the top oh and the left to the midsection Keane's found his timing and his range early in this bout here in round one and that left knee comes up instinctively nice work again from the man in the blue corner just as Jake sets himself in the red, Keen gets to work and makes Jake reset again. That's been the problem for this young man in the red corner. Every time he's looked to do his work and got set to do it, Keen's just got there first. I call it preemptive countering. And that's what Keen's done very well. The icing on the cake was the double kick combination, but he's taken this first round for me. Tommy Crossland there in the corner, champion as well for the Combat Academy. Round two, they touch gloves. Low kick from Jake. Tommy steps in with a beautiful left hook around the guard. And then the left leg, the round kick off the lead leg to the same spot. But accuracy and timing continuing into round two. Left knee disengages. Mike's happy. Now you can see Jake's looking to push forward. But it's Keane throwing the shots and that's the problem for Jake. He's gutsy, he's game, he's coming forward. But as he sets himself to throw the shots, Keane gets there first. Now Jake looks to step in. This is better, he's got to work. This is what he's got to do. Better work from the man in the red corner. Looking to stay in the pocket and keep Keane under pressure. Keane steps back, drives the left knee in. But he's upped his work rate. Jake in the red corner. 
and he's the better for it here in the second round. Good work from the red now. And is that a low blow? No, it's obviously a low blow as Mike is giving him time to recover. Keen. Keen gives him a little nod. Jake just being told to keep it up. Away they go again. Keen doubles the jab. That was a good round for Jake until that moment. He's got to keep that momentum going. As Keen throws that kick, this is better. As I said, Jake looking to get inside, but Keen finding his range again as Jake comes in. But I'd say a much better round for the young man in the red corner from the first. Change of tactics has worked in his favour, trying to close the gap and just keep the shots coming. And it's meant that Keane hasn't been able to fire the shots at will at the range he wants. He's been dragged into a fight and it's suited the young man in the red corner. Well, that was a good comeback from Jake in the red corner there. Stepped on the gas, stepped into the pocket. And Keane wasn't able to keep the range that he wanted and keep the work going that he was so good with in the first round. Had to think, had to fight a genuine rearguard action. Let's see how round three goes. Neither will want to give round ground here. And as you can see, exactly that, both looking to stand and trade. They know how important round three is. Now, Jake is saying that was midsection. He's clearly saying that was to the tummy. But the judges see otherwise. They see it otherwise. That's the second time in this bout. So he's saying it's got to be the point deduction this time. Mike checking with his judges. Deducts the point, which is a shame. Not the deducted point. I'm on about the momentum of the bout. It's disrupted the whole momentum of what was a very good bout. And now this recovery time, the flow that was going nicely across the three rounds has had to stop. Keane's ready. Mike's saying you don't have to be, you've got time. Very good referee, this man. He's saying to Keane, if you're not ready, you're not ready, you have more time. So here we go, and Jake looking to do exactly the same tactics again, rough keen up, he's got to go for broke now, he's got that point deduction, and listen to the crowd as they stand toe to toe, again tactically it's right for Jake, he's just got to watch where those low strikes go, he can't afford another point deduction, in fact he's got to get a knockdown or a count against Keane and as he does that Keane brings in an overhand right which is the danger the counter but this is good tactics from Jake straight right hand from Keane he's having to dig deep here as Jake pushes forward and left and right coming in the left knee in reply from Keane looks for that left knee once more and then the long left and right. Jake looks for the right, then the left. Keane backs up, throws the left knee. 
Jake straight back in. Keane throws the big right. He's holding there, back of the head and throwing the uppercut. And again, that clipping right hand from Keane. We're near the end of this bout now and both men will know they've been in an absolute war. And this is what Jake needs. He must force either a stoppage or a count. And he knows it. Another tough, tough bout here at Ring Wars. And the right hand, just the more accurate from Keane. What a battle. The point deduction was vital there in a tough, brutal battle. 